Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to take a quick look at something I've used extensively in my professional career, uh, and that is FreePVX. Uh, it is basically just a phone system that you can deploy on a virtual machine. So let's say you're tired of paying optimum $100 a month for basic phone service. All you really have to do is spin up a virtual machine, throw a free PBX on there, do a few things, and purchase a DID from someone, and uh, you're pretty much all set. It's very simple, very easy, and today we're just gonna go through uh, installing the system itself, and downloading the ISO, and where you can get a DID from. So DID is basically just a phone number and it's pretty simple. So let's switch over to the website here and if you go to just freepbx.org, you hit download, you put in your name and email, you could say you're an end user and you could deploy it on premise or in the cloud. So you can do this on an AWS instance, an Azure instance, a GCP instance, your own private cloud or you know, so I'm just gonna select on premise because then I'll just get the ISO from here. So from here out, you can deploy this just as a regular virtual machine on VirtualBox. So very similar to pretty much everything else that we utilize. Uh, we'll just go ahead and say free PBX. And the best way to do this is just put Linux and it's built off of Debian or CentOS. So we could just look for, where is, just do Linux, and then typically, where is it, Debian 64-bit, or actually Red Hat, sorry, Red Hat. Put it on Red Hat, hit next, we'll give it some 4096, I think, four gigs of RAM. We'll add a hard disk, and a VDI is fine. We're gonna dynamically allocate it so that we don't do fixed size, basically thick provision versus thin provision, if you're in the world of uh, VMware. Very simple stuff here. You just don't want it to get you know, clogged up or anything like that. So then you'll give it the base size. So we could, we'll start it at 25 gigabytes of storage. And I'm gonna store this on a separate hard drive. And I think I have VM disks. Yep. So there we go. And now if I go ahead and go into the settings, go under my storage, go to my attributes for uh, my optical drive. We'll do live CD DVD. And let me choose my disk file for my Sangoma. Hit OK and power us up. Very, very simple, very straightforward so far. Uh, not much you really need to do. Just gonna go ahead and start it. Um, now the I guess the hardest part, realistically, is purchasing a DID. Now you could do this on a number of different. Where it is? Okay. Um, so I personally use Quest Blue. Uh, there's other DID providers, so we could do uh, buy DID. There's DIDs for sale. There's, I think there's another one here. There's like a list, and I can leave a, a link to these below. Um, but you know, very very straightforward. You can get from VoIP Innovations, ThinQ, Alcazar Networks. DID for sale, very similar stuff. Uh, and what they are is essentially just a, uh, you buy a DID and then you set up a, uh, a trunk back to the DID provider and then you run your public exchange or PBX system and it acts as the phone system. So you have to just then establish what trunk parameters to put in, um, the trunk settings and your inbound routes and outbound routes and things like that. Uh, Asterix is very involved, but it's very simple because there's so many, so many resources out there to tell you exactly how to configure things 
and uh, yeah, so it's very, very simple. Um, this is just as you would be setting up the CentOS 7 box, you'd, you'd be doing this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set up a password. It's weak, so I'll have to hit done twice. Uh, and then I'll just wait. Um, and I always forget which key it is. There it is, left control. And yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and wait for this then to finish. Uh, it should be relatively quick, so I'll be right back. Now, actually, while this is installing, uh, let me speak a little bit on the back end and, and after you get everything set up, what is it that you need in order to actually make use of this system? Uh, so that's going to be pretty much any IP phone or any of the free soft phones that come with it. So you can find the free soft phones pretty much anywhere. Uh, there's one that I used in the past called Zoiper. It's It works, gets the job done, very simple stuff. Um, and then you could have an IP phone like a Yalink or a Sangoma or a, or a Polycom. So maybe your office is throwing some out and you know they don't have a use for them anymore and you just got yourself an IP phone. They're also relatively cheap if you wanted to spend a little under a hundred bucks and you can get yourself a very basic one. Um, the cool part about a VoIP system like this is that you can also route all the calls back to your cell phone at some point so that way you get um, all the calls end up at your cell phone just in case you have an internet outage. It's really not going to work unless you put the DID's provider. You're going to forward from the DID provider. Um, but in a situation where you're relying on Optimum's phone system, then if you have an internet outage, your phones are out, your SOL basically. Um, but if, if you're doing this, you get a DID from someone. In the DID uh, provider's website, most times you can forward to a cell phone or to another number and it'll just end up at your phone. It'll bypass all of the system settings you have on your free PBX instance. But yeah, it's, it's very straightforward in terms of the things that you can do. Uh, it is built as an enterprise solution, so there's going to be a lot of things that you don't use uh, if you're using this for your home. Uh, and if you're using this at work, then there are a lot of things that you'll have to kind of just either read up on or kind of understand the features um, and functionality of the system because there's a lot of things you can do. Um, so you could do ring groups, you could do the IVRs, so your uh, interactive voice response system basically, your auto attendance, um, you could do paging, you could do conference calls, you could do uh, parking calls, you could, you, there's so many different things that uh, you can utilize this and custom build it for any client or your own company or yourself at home if you wanted to have another number just in case, you know, maybe you don't want to get all the soliciting calls, right, on your cell phone. You want to just kind of throw in your home number and then you can kind of reduce some of the stress that you get on your cell phone and just kind of throw it all on this system and uh, it'll be a valid DID number. You can listen to the voicemails every once in a while. You can even set up voicemail to email. Um, so that way you get you get emails there and you get your voicemails. So if there is something that you're actually looking for, you can grab it. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's very straightforward. And this seems like it's going to take a very long time. So honestly, what I'll do is I'll end the video here. And um, I'll try to prepare next time with a DID. That way we can j jump right into the um, actual configuration part of the, the, the videos. Um, where we'll go in and create a DID, create a trunk port, everything pretty much. So, yep, I will see you guys next time. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel for some more upcoming content. We're going to start uh, kind of doing pretty much whatever. Uh, I'm going to do exactly what I've been doing the past three years, but this time I'm going to record it. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the ride, and I will see you guys next time.